Hi everyone, welcome to our second streaming. We are so happy to be uh, here again with you and uh, we are very excited. I'm Karen Hernandez, I'm Community Manager here in Mercury's team and I'm with Joan. Hi Joan. Hello, I'm Joan and I'm a game designer for Spaceballs. So yeah, as you may know, uh, we are going to talk about the new rewards and then we are going to speak about the new Aleph drops and in the end uh, we are going to talk also about the patch notes and some character and weapon balance. Of course, at the end of the streaming you can talk to us, you can uh, make your questions so we can uh, resolve your, your doubts. So yeah, uh, this new update, Prices Galore, uh, separates rewards from matchmaking queues, allowing you to queue for any mission or any mod you wish for. Uh, this will give the matchmaking uh, more flexibility, but the players will have also more freedom to queue for whatever mission they feel like playing. So we are going to show you how uh, these new rewards uh, work. Yeah, so would we, um, the main focus of this new update has been uh, on improving the quality of life around the game. Yeah. Uh, um, so what we did is um, a, a, a little too much time is spent on uh, queuing up for the game, waiting for the next match, and, and we really wanted to improve the experience for the players and one of the main things that made that difficult is the fact that uh, rewards were linked to specific missions. Mm -hmm. So you really had to um, queue for only one, two, three missions for the gold or whatever, or the blueprint that you wanted. Uh, but then uh, the fact that so many people were que queuing for a few missions mean, meant that the matchmaking had much less possibilities to match people together. Yeah. So with this uh, new update, um, you can play whatever mission you feel like. It's you, you can play your favorite character, your favorite mission, yes. and most of all, if what you care about is uh, waiting time, you can just quick play with no drawbacks. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get the same uh, rewards regardless. And with uh, more people doing that, uh, we expect the matchmaking system to improve by, by quite a lot. Uh, you will uh, receive rewards as, as now and you still will receive a score after each mission uh, accordingly to your, uh, to your, uh, well, your score. Uh, the rewards you gain are different in the first, second, third mission and so on. But the total XP you can gain uh, on a single day is limited. Uh, XP requirements for all, all levels have been changed around this and well, this should not feel like the, the, the leveling up is slower. Yeah, not at all. Um, the, one of the big problems we had with uh, acquiring resources in the game, especially the lower levels, yep. was that uh, intensive players would play a lot of, lots of games in seeing one, two, three days. And uh, EXP for, uh, was pretty much stable for each match. So each match you played gave you pretty much the same XP as the uh, previous one. Yep. However, the... The gold income was diminishing through the day. So intensive players found that themselves quickly at a high level with no gold and no means to acquire all the content that they unlocked. So with this new change, it's, we're switching it the other way around. Uh, when someone picks up the game um, brand new, uh, what's going to happen is that they'll, if, if they do play quite a lot of matches in, in their first uh, few days, What's going to happen is that instead of being a high level players with no gold, they're going to be medium level players with plenty of gold to acquire all the unlockables that are in the game. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest uh, change of waiver is that you don't lose the rewards you didn't gain. Uh, you can log in into the game the next day and those re rewards will be waiting for you because they are stored in the accumulated pot. So as you can see in the, in the game, the accumulated pot is situated on the right side. And yeah, basically, this is where all is a store. Yeah, um, so, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so yeah, so what happens is we have this reward system that's linked to your score. And that's great because it, it really rewards good performances. Yeah. But sometimes losses are just not your fault. Or maybe you have a bad day and you chain three losses in a row, and, and the experience can be really bad. 
So with this new system, we want you to have a second shot at it. So um, if it's been a, you know, that can be bad days. Tomorrow's another day, you can log in and play for yesterday's uh, rewards. Yeah. This uh, pot also grows uh, daily up until uh, up to uh, five days in a row. So what we're doing here is, again, promoting uh, player freedom and giving you some space. If you don't play space for a couple of days, it's fine. It's not that big of a penalty of it as it used to be. Mm -hmm. We found that some uh, there are some really hardcore uh, weekend uh, players. Yeah. Weekend players were playing lots of games in two days and getting pretty much so close to no rewards for because it was just really just a, a couple of days of, of, of income. Um, yeah, so with the pod growth uh, for five days, it's going to fit just perfectly nicely between weekends. Uh, we'll make sure that um, and the system is, is so much more uh, forgiving for people who just play two days a week, even if they are just, just as hardcore as uh, everyday players. Yep. So uh, the biggest progression balance uh, change uh, is the redistribution of the forge levels, right? Yes. Yes. Um, Forge levels, we had a, a bit too many forge levels, and we wanted to, we've, we've compressed them, so the power is pretty much the same, but there's less power steps. Mm -hmm. We want you to feel those power steps, uh, and also there was a situation where sometimes you would uh, get a blueprint, you wanted to build it, but you were so close to the next power step that you, that like the wise decision was not to build it. Um, we are, I think with less power steps, the decision will be more clear. And there will be less uh, situations where you kind of have to do the opposite of what you feel like doing. So yeah, uh, players, as you know, we are going to speak about also the new ALF drops. Uh, you guys have been asking a lot about that. So uh, players can now mm, drop the ALF. Uh, the ALF gems will stay around and they will be pickable. Uh, just like the Aleph gems the enemies drop, uh, but there's more. Uh, Aleph gems can now be triggered to explode, you can shoot at them. So uh, this will ignite them uh, and they will explode. They still be pickable, but they will explode after a few seconds. We are going to show you now uh, how these new Aleph drops uh, work. We are now uh, opening the version also but um, yeah it's okay yeah okay. Um, it's okay play. let's go um, Aleph is like the central force of the broken planet so much of the narrative and and like 90% of the missions revolve about uh, getting uh, Aleph and, and and playing around it but uh, something that, it, that we really felt the game was lacking is that Aleph was this abstract presence. It, it was really a hat, I, hat thing where you had Aleph in yourself and enemies had Aleph like in them and then you put it in a machine. But it didn't have the, the presence, the, the gameplay feeling that it was really something physical that was there. So we really wanted to make Aleph much more physical, much more present, uh, present right. in the reality. Um, so. There's, you know, before we, we settled for this, there's something else that we tried and we wanted to talk about uh, one of these possibilities because actually we started out with um, consume, uh, uh, the ability to consume Aleph just like uh, AI is those. So AI, AI enemies, they, when they get Aleph, they can just consume it and have this power up. So we, we tried that. So we tried to have uh, uh, different characters uh, when they acquire Aleph, they can like kind of inject it and have this power up. And, and this was cool because you, you, you could make, that was a new game decision yep. to take. Yes. And also the design ceiling for that was theoretically like huge. So you can pretty much go anywhere. But the problem with that is that, first off, the decision was still quite binary. You will either inject or not inject the Aleph, but it wasn't that, that complex of a decision. Yeah. And then we hadn't really solved the problem. The, the improved the, uh, what we wanted because it was still a hard thing, right? You, you had the Alef, you could, through your uh, controller, inject the Alef and that had this power out that's affecting you, but it didn't have that presence. So uh, in the end, we, we opted for a much cleaner uh, solution and it's it, it's pretty much, it's very much uh, an organic thing. Yes. Alef gems are there, mm -hmm. you can drop them. 
if you shoot at them, but I, I don't know if it's like pure energy, you shoot at it, boom, it explodes, it has a huge gameplay effect. So now we have an ability that has uh, positioning and timing, so there's plenty of room for uh, player creativity, uh, there's room for mistakes, uh, the Aleph can be robbed for you, uh, from you if you uh, mistime it or misplace the Aleph, and, and also it can be used a, a, as a, a team play tool because you can trade the Aleph between players. So uh, there's so much more uh, player expression around it. And then the narrative is just there. It's pure energy and it's there in the world. And it's dangerous. And the feeling just <laughs> so good. So we are uh, ultimately that's what we went for. Cool. So uh, now that we have speak about Yalef drops, we would like to speak about some changes you, you saw on the uh, on the patch notes. So yeah, um, we are going to put the uh, Loth trailer yes. since uh, we are going to speak about him later. Hey, you guys! So yeah, uh, we are going. We are now uh, seeing the bubble gum. Uh, was this weapon was one of uh, those rare weapons that sometimes uh, wasn't just cutting it. Uh, so this uh, the the goal of this uh, remake uh, is give the player uh, more choice and deeper mechanics as rare weapons should. Yeah, it's one of those weapons that we like to revisit from time to time. Some rare weapons just don't offer the complexity or the depth that they should, and uh, Bubblegum was definitely one of them. Uh, what we did is um, we were a more infection, so you can stick the grenades to the wall, and then you can freely detonate them anytime you want. Mm -hmm. um, this gives so much more player choice and really positions the weapon as the rare weapon that it should be. Yep. Um, this is not a power level thing, the weapon was not especially uh, uh, powerful, we think, but uh, before we could put it in the right place, it, it had to have so much more player expression. Mm -hmm. And now that you really can do so many things with it, we, it's, whether it's over or underpowered, it's, it's going to be really much more easier to balance and it's going to find its place. Cool. So yeah, uh, we are going to speak now about Rack, so yeah, let's... Let's do this, let's watch his trailer as well.
why? We 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 were what? Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. We know. We know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, these these are things that happen when we are on life, of course. Oh, sorry. As I was saying before, uh, Rocky is one of the strongest characters on Space Lords, so we have to take some of uh, his stronger weapons, right? That's right. <laughs> um, the main issue with Rack was uh, Shepard's power. The Shepard is a uh, uh, a bit too powerful. We've nerfed it, <laughs> but with with special nerfed it long distance. So with, uh, with this, we were trying to position Shepard as a medium-range weapon. It's tactical, but it's also imprecise. Uh, and then we have uh, DPY. DPY has been slightly buffed or more tuned around to be a more reliable, yeah. long-range alternative to, to a Shepard. The most interesting changes to Rack, however, are on uh, the hatchet. The hatchet, the hatchet yeah. is uh, a weapon that's had its uh, range increased and it should now allow for much more creative plays. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, maybe you can do them. Um, and so we think uh, Rack's uh, players, even if Rack has been slightly, like, mostly nerfed this time around, uh, they should find like new toys to play with in the form of the uh, hatchet or body oh. provide. Okay, finally, we're going to speak about Doldron, so let's go. So yeah, the JK5 um, has never been where it should be power-wise, uh, for so that's why we are improving its usability while keeping an eye on the on the power level. Yes, JK5 has been uh, Spellor's uh, weakest weapon for a long time. Yep. We really want to position it uh, back where it should be, and because we've improved it quite a few times in the past, we've just. Uh, left caution aside and massively buffed it. We've increased the ballot count as well as the starting spread So it just starts so much more precise right now And we hope the weapon like we think weapons should be in the right place if not uh, A bit above the desired power level, but since it's been so weak for so long with it, it, it's, it's something that we can That, that, that we're, we're happy to assume and if uh, it turns out to be too much, well, we'll well balance around it and there's also, also, also something about uh, patient boy patient boy is a weapon that we really want to to change there's something really cool coming coming for uh, the next patch it's going to receive quite of the bubble gum treatment and have a much more richer interaction than it does right now but because some of the changes needed were just easy to implement we've gone ahead and put them on the patch even if it's just half of the weapon that you're going to see next patch Cool, so uh, now that we have spoken about the uh, new rewards, new Aleph drops, and uh, weapon and character balance, it's time for you to speak. So I'm going to read uh, some questions you have been doing uh, on the streaming, and you can still send yours, and we'll try to answer as many of them <laughs> as possible, yeah. since you are a lot, and you, are, you talk a lot, but we love you guys. So yeah, uh, let's see. I think I saw one earlier. Yes. Oh, yeah, somebody was asking about um, yes, it's key. Uh, the other yeah. drops, yeah. Uh, uh, friendly damage and damage system. Mm -hmm. So what we've gone with is you can drop Aleph. Do I have the game put in there? Can you just okay. put in the game, please? Sure. Cool. Um, so when I drop my Aleph and I shoot it and it explodes, the damage of the Aleph explosion is stacked with the uh, shooter's team. 
Mm -hmm. So this makes harassing your own team uh, impossible and also allows you to have a... So whenever uh, a Raider and an Italian start competing for, uh, for another drop, it's so much more interesting, right? Because you can either go for it and try to pick it up, you can trigger it, and you can still pick it up while it's triggered. So all kinds of situations arise. Um, there are some more complex stuff than, that can happen, and that's, well, uh, an Aleph explosion can trigger another Aleph explosion, but then it's just tagged with the same team that uh, triggered the f first explosion, so it's not that complicated, really. Okay, so KKJ uh, was asking before, I guess it's uh, Lowe's re and related. Uh, he says, is it the down D part button for dropping mines? I guess it's... Yes, yes. yes. With the uh, controller, it's the uh, D part uh, down to drop uh, L. Okay, so uh, e Eucalyptus says, uh, I'm, I may have missed something, but in the stream right now, did the enemy skill with low weapons drop ammo, or am I mistaken, this one? Um, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, well, I no. think they do. Um, not sure what love has to do with uh, ammo drops. Like love shouldn't work like any differently than any other player with the ammo drops. Okay, so uh, with ammo and Aleph dropping from getting shot, are you considering making melee kills give ammo and Aleph immediately like before? Uh, could really help Antax and return game to previous fast pace for Raiders. Yeah, well, right now we're, we're um, there's this. Uh, a number of changes that we're going to Aleph and this that you've seen with the Aleph drops and the explosions this is just really part two of a three part change yeah. so with the new um, with the new patch more Aleph changes are coming we're not ready to share them yet though um, currently uh, automatically picking Aleph is not one of them but we're, well, we're open to testing it see what the problems are and, and and make sure that picking up Aleph is a quick and easy uh, task. It's not something that you have to backtrack and sometimes like kind of uh, search for it. So you will we'll test it and, and, and see how it goes, yeah. Okay. So, uh, McNuffin, Joan, can you tell us what about the active card display? Didn't work as intended, so it was removed. Uh, I guess it's uh, one of the cards for for this character. Yeah, I think uh, it's about uh, the other possibility for Aleph drops, right? And instead of Aleph drops, we wanted to activate an Aleph power with your, uh, with your, uh, with your Aleph. But the main thing with that is that it didn't really have presence in the game, right? So even if we add a power up for a player, if it doesn't express itself on the physical world and it's not really there to interact with, dodge, hide, uh, and, you know, uh, do a, an advanced strategy around it, well, then it's, uh, it's not really that interesting, really. Okay, I, I, I'm seeing the questions are, you know, not only about the prices color update, but the, the something else. So, uh, Whisper is asking, which kind of shields can pierce smoking daisies, projectiles, liquid shield, um, Mika's barrier, turret shields? Yeah, I don't have a, a list right now with me. The change with Smoking Daisy was uh, something, it was more about uh, being consistent across piercing weapons. Mm -hmm. So right now Smoking Daisy should behave just like uh, all the piercing weapons. I don't know if we uh, we are able to show uh, the ways Ayana's Mines. Ayana's Mines, okay. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, I can show you something cool. Um, this surface that you see, can you, yeah, the game's right there, okay, yes. uh, has actually two kinds of collision information. There's one for navigating and one for shooting. Mm -hmm. So this little step right here, this makes no difference when it comes to navigating for players, but it does make a weapon, a uh, difference for weapons. So if there's this little, little broken one here, weapons can shoot through that, even if players can sometimes, sometimes, the collision is simplified. What happened with Diana's mines is that they were using, like as it seems to be uh, common sense, 
the weapon setting. And that allowed you to position it into pretty much any surface. Really, like, you could use all of the little mm, triangles in there to position your mines. And, and while that is the most actually realistic use of it, what happened is that some, some levels, not specifically this one, but on, on some levels what we had is there was some complex geometry where you would stick a mine and it would go in any direction because you didn't really have the precision to position on, 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 on a pre, pre, really precise spot. So uh, what we've done is now Yana's mines use the same collision that players do, which is a simplified collision. So if you have a, something that's broken and has really weird um, uh, geometry, it's going to go either uh, up, left, uh, but it's not going to be have a weird positioning in between. So this is the change. Um, and it, it, it's actually a quality of life thing for Ayana because sometimes you would run, uh, slide, drop a mine, and you don't really control where it lands. So you really want it to behave, to, to stick to the um, mobility collision rather than the shooting collision. Mm -hmm. So uh, I saw a question, uh, Benji Wallon. Hi Benji, uh, why is Constantine lock, locked for new players? Yeah, that's, uh, that's something that only really happens at, uh, for level 1 players, so it's not something that players should uh, well easily encounter. Um, we found that Constantine can be a little harder to use for new players, so we'd rather uh, show them other players, and, uh, and, and, and we'd rather have them play uh, other characters as a different experience. Okay, and another one. Can you just log in once a week and collect accumulated pot, not playing, but still getting daily gain? Oh, no, no, no. Um, you do not earn any rewards for not playing. Mm -hmm. The accumulated pot is uh, just another reward for a mind that you have to play. So in the end, your score on that, it's the second chance. So you played for these prizes, you lost them, the next day you come back, you have one match to play for the game, so it's really like a second shot at the same prizes. You have to play the game. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Crispy Churro. Uh, okay, so no plans for return uh, melee finishers, uh, mm. left absor absorption. Mm. Not right now, not that I can confirm. We are not. We are still the experiences with with uh, the uh, the Aleph drops, and we have told that on the forum, and so. But yeah, we are still making a lot of uh, things. So yeah, um, Pronto Shop is asking, what are those orange glowy spots on Dolly? Sorry, uh, the questions are arriving at all time and I don't know if um, you are asking about uh, a specific character, so uh, please be specific so we can know what you are talking about. I think it's about uh, Toldrin's appearance right now. Yeah. Um, it shows when you have uh, Aleph in you. So if you have uh, Aleph charges in you, you will now glow orange. Mm -hmm. and that's just it. If I just drop it, it should, you see? Uh, it's no longer uh, lighted up in orange. Mm -hmm. So, oh my god, a lot of things. I loved guns when I was a noob. <laughs> Take us. Okay. Mm. Well, oh my god, guys, you're a lot. Mendy, Constantine is best character for in shock trial mission. Ah. Yeah, the. Uh, First match is no longer played in any shock, so it's, it's not a big deal. Then again, the, the first match is, is about learning the game, it's not about using the best character for the mission, so it really has more to do with the uh, controls and the abilities and the fact that uh, some abilities are just more reactive and better for the first experience, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a lot from then on, so it's not, not really that special. So tell us when we get Soma, we can say in a specific date uh, still, but she mo she will most likely arrive on uh, July. So yeah, we as Hernan quote on the forums, uh, we want to make her as great as possible. So yeah, that takes time and some adjustments and to make her her perfect. Oh my, okay. A lot of people, a lot of known people here. Mm. I always see you on social media, and so so it's cool to see you here. 
Um, <laughs> Ocean Fox still want my Snyder Snyder skin where is he's only wearing a bath towel. Okay, I don't know. Work in progress. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> So Benji is asking again, how many levels per day can you get? Well, that's no, you know the experience needed for each level is uh, different. So it's it depends. Like uh, I bought in, like first fifteen levels, it should be one level a match, mostly not always, mm -hmm. and then it kind of slow down. It's not really that much of a difference between what happens right now. Like not that many people play uh, more than five matches a day to really find a difference between the two systems. Okay, so uh, Mednafen, uh, was that ask you considered for a similar collision treatment like Ayana's mines? Uh, what, what's with what weapons? Did the Tarasque for hands? Tarasque for hands. Uh, the explosive one. Could be, yeah, it could be. It's, it's something that we would have to explore. So there's probably other weapons that would benefit from having this, uh, from using the other collision. Keep in mind that that's not an advantage. At all, mm -hmm. it just means that um, sometimes you want the, uh, one of the the player expects expects the weapon to behave like that. So in some levels, you're gonna find funny geometry that sometimes you want to use in your advantage. So we have to analyze weapon by weapon and see what each weapon needs. Mm -hmm. So Jeeper Creeper, he's asking. So with the new reward system, will blueprints still be given to the character you beat the mission with? Yes, yes, there has been no change to the blueprint system or the way that prizes are awarded. There are certain prizes that you can win for a mission and then your score uh, determines whether you gain more gold, less gold, whether you get to print or not, the same way as it used to be. Okay, uh, Sergei Kosinski uh, is asking, will shit happens be rework again? Mm, uh, not sure if that's in the works. You guys uh, are asking. <laughs> now we are going. You are being too, <laughs> too specific. So uh, we are, uh, no, we are always changing everything. So and we are based also on the data. You know the. Yeah. Um. It's. Um. I'm not sure. We do have like a kind of a plan, and that I don't have with me. Uh, shit happens. Is definitely a, a weapon that. We could revisit, but I don't know. Okay, Tegas. Yes, more skins. It's always appreciated. Don't worry, more skins are coming, and they are so cool. I know you guys are gonna love them. Um, yeah. Question. Cool, cool phone. He's asking, well, when do we get to play with you or against you? Well, we can do that in the future as well. We have confirmed we want to play with you, against you. You can antagonize us. You can do a lot of things. You can kill us on life. So, yeah, I know you're going to love that. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be the one um, making that challenge, but probably, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be the babe team. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, Sergei Kuczynski is asking, will you update tutorials now that system change? Uh, um, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, tutorial changes are coming, but like this update does feature a new, uh, first, a uh, slightly different uh, first experience, uh, but probably with the next patch we'll have something more, more obvious. I think this depends, but Benji Walla is, uh, he says, I got two, three levels a day with around uh, 10,000 permission needed previously. How much can we get? I think new players might be uh, put off if they can get as much experience per day as they play. Yeah, uh, as I said, I don't have the numbers with me, and it's a pretty complex yes. uh, Excel file to follow, so it's really hard for me to... It's difficult to, to measure, yeah. To, um, to really give you numbers right now, but uh, new players are actually going to have a much easier experience because uh, tuning the experience for the first um, uh, 20 or so levels is so much easier, so it's been tuned around and really worked. Uh, as for the um, higher levels, it should still feel the same as it used to, and if it doesn't, we'll, we'll change around. Okay, so GR Gamer uh, have been asking about the roadmap. 
Uh, we don't know how the Roma is going to be finished. Uh, we work uh, on a lot of things, so it's difficult to measure as well. But uh, what you guys need to know is that we do our best to give you the best possible experience. So I don't know if you have to say something about it. Well, yeah, we're working hard on the next band and we're not quite ready to talk about it yet. Yes, that's it. Um, let's see, let's see. Mm, nice, more skin are coming. Oh, Backcorp, hi. There's a lot of, of um, known people. It's, it's cool. Um, hmm. Is the, uh, 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 is the snap nose? I don't know. I don't know. Is it the... Hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, guys, you're asking a lot. I'm trying to uh, keep on. on. Yeah. Uh, the Whisper right here asks about Ayana Short Nine. Yes. I, uh, it's just re been released so recently. We had with the. Um, what happens when we release a weapon is that the first, the first week or so, uh, we have it's a data gathering period. So we have the bug reports, if a bug, of, of, of course, like specific bugs, such as that if, if there are invisible lines, which I'm not, I'd have to ask a QA about it, um, while that's being patched and, and, and bugs are just solved as quick as possible. And all the power issues and behavior issues and more design stuff, we need like kind of like a week, we gather the data mm -hmm. and then we meet and then we analyze weapon by weapon when we, we want to take it. Uh, so, uh, Life21 uh, Daima, uh, is there a possibility we will be getting a new gun scheme cards for Aneska? Great stream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have new stuff coming for skins and such, but... Who knows? Yeah, we're not quite ready there. again. We are working on it. But um, I know you guys, as I said before, I'm gonna love them because I love them. So mm. I know we are we have similar tastes. Uh, thank you for your responses. No, thank you for being there. Uh, this is this is amazing. <laughs> is this is this the rice? I don't know if it's it. The rice. <laughs> Can you guess? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know. Uh, There's this question by Jipa Kripa asking about gun effects triggering LF explosions. As far as I know, all gun effects should trigger uh, LF explosions, but I'm not sure. But, but I, I do think that Cosmon Rays don't target that. So um, anything that can deal damage will damage the, um, the LF gem, but things that have to pick a target and have to activate uh, for them to deal damage, it's like uh, Yana's Mines and so on, I think they don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love how they are talking. Oh my god. They have like the intern jokes, so mm -hmm. that's <laughs> Okay, so you was answering the Jeeper Creeper one? Yeah. Okay. I think so, oh, Nerafi, have you thought of separating PvE and PvP damage? That's a deep question. That's yeah. a complicated question. Um, separating PvE and PvP damage is a possibility, that, but it, it's really a double-edged sword in the, the, it theoretically gives you like apparently perfect uh, ability to balance all the game, but it comes at a high price. First off, um, the costs uh, of uh, every design decision double, which means we either do things twice as slower or just twice as badly and mess up just twice as much. And that's a big deal actually because um, uh, the, the, the proper um, deciding on which uh, Challenges, deciding which challenges you want to face is one of what you want to face, and, and you think you can uh, problems that you think you can solve is one of the big decision, uh, design decisions that we take. So, then again, it's, it's like a really poison gift that would be really complex. 
and then it would uh, take so much from the learning of the game and there's so many metrics that you know uh, because you play a character and it's second nature to you and you know how much damage you need to deal to kill a certain enemy and if the PvP and PvE damage was uh, different it would just screw up so much of the learning and the uh, second nature of the that, 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 that happens when you manage a weapon and a character like really well. Right. Okay, so Adi is asking, will you uh, consider making custom melee animations for each raider based on their melee? 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 How would in English is melee? I think it's melee. Melee? He's melee, I don't know. Weapon to justify the cost of buying melee weapons for each raider. Uh, I, I know what they are asking. Yeah, um, right now the, the animations for each weapon are not custom to each raider. Raiders do have a custom set, like the default set, fighting set for each raider is specific to each uh, faction, so they are different and the finishers are different, but, but right now not for the aesthetics. One the thing that happens with this, the aesthetics is that we really have to balance the produ uh, producing cost uh, because uh, we really need to, uh, it's something that we've um, struggled in the past yep. and it's uh, having the right production cost so we can price the items in a way that's, that's fair. So if we uh, over design a product, what happens is that it, it just will not reach the players at the, pri at the price point that, 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 that makes sense. So um, really making a specific melee set for, rider, for each raider and weapon uh, would probably um, scale up the costs quite a lot. Okay, uh, back there, I think this is so, this is so cool. Uh, my wife says you guys have amazing artists working on there. We she do. loves your art style in Space Wars. We do. Uh, yes. Yeah, we agree. There are a lot of talented people here and we all are amazed every day, mm. <laughs> almost every day with their work. So yeah. Uh, it's, it's great, thank you guys so much. Um, okay, Mednafen, are there any plans to further adjust the emote system like a wait or go comment? Ah. Mm. Hmm. Um, we are reviewing some of the. I, I think you're uh, the. Um, they are talking about the command system, so yes. like giving orders like wait the or demo. go mm -hmm. rather than. Uh, emotes that are more emotes are more like uh, static stuff where you just signal to other players yep. and the commands are more instructions we are uh, watching closely the instructions the orders that we have in game and see what we can put in and, 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 and out and, and we'll, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if we'll, we'll change them as for emotes we are making lots of emotes some of them are purely aesthetic and they're just dances but some of them do have a uh, can convey meaning, so yeah, there will be a mode in the future that you can use to convey meaning as well. That's great. So, uh, pronto shot. Uh, will the Aleph gems? Uh, I don't know if we if we mentioned this before. Uh, he's asking, will the Aleph gems explosion damage balls as well as well? Yes, they they do, and it's actually one of the more significant changes gameplay wise or balance wise mm -hmm. of of this update. Um, as I said, the, the new Aleph drop feature has so much player freedom into it, and there's so much that you can do. And like mission to mission, there are different uses for that, and, and the fact that you can like kind of bomb bosses with it is a huge change. In fact, it's one of the changes, one of the changes that's taken us more time to balance and work around, because you could do pretty much pretty, like radical stuff to bosses, and we've been tuning it around. There's like, it's quite possible that something has slipped and that there's bosses that will be heavily influenced by this mechanic. Like we expect some bosses to really be uh, like weaker to others. Not, not, not because they're like numerically weaker, but because uh, they have more predictable movements or there's more alpha av available on, on the mission. And, and for those bosses, uh, like the meta should, uh, should uh, switch quite a, quite a lot. And we're like ready to see what happens and, and adapt. Okay. 
Oh, hi, Hack Milky Way. He's asking, uh, this is a question for you, and favorite character to play and why? Oh, um, like, character I like to play the most is, uh, is Loth. Mm -hmm. um, Loth has, like, not that much uh, depth or complexity. But like all of his weapons have this uh, radial uh, fallout of damage, mm. so uh, it rewards precision a lot. So even if it doesn't look like a character that requires precision, it, it actually requires a lot of precision because if you place the grenade just um, b uh, below the enemy, mm. the, the damage is so much higher. And then the uh, Lowe's um, ability is not only extremely cool, it's also tactically so important. And whenever there's a huge survival phase and we're completely lost, I switch on to beast mode, uh, clean the map. I that's like for me that's the most rewarding thing you can do in this game, or at least that's that's how I feel because I, I feel like I literally turned into a monster, clean the map and save the and save the day. <laughs> Amazing. So uh, Ocean Fox, uh, will Aneska secondary fire on her weapon activated crystals? I, I guess uh, it's asking if, uh, if... I think so. The gems, if, yes. if they can explode with the... Yes, I think so. It deals, like, deals damage. Anything that deals damage activates the crystals. Uh, like, I, I, there's lots of interactions. I don't have a list for them right now. But generally speaking, anything that would deal damage to anything that was there will deal, deal mm -hmm. damage to the gems. Things that will not deal damage is things that need to be triggered specifically by an enemy. So, all of them are not an enemy in, in that sense. But, um, who knows, um, uh, that's something that we'll, we'll have to see if that's the right decision or not. Okay. Uh, Benji Walla, any chance you can give insight to push uh, changes coming in the future? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, the push mechanic. So yeah, we drastically nerfed uh, Tatsuk because, um, because now we are ready to, we know that's temporary and we know that's not a solution at all. It's just something that we do while we implement these changes. The push mechanic is, it takes uh, too much away from the receiving end. And so uh, while the, usually weapons that have push do require quite a lot of player skill and you have to position them and the, and the, and the direction of the push is really meaningful. Uh, the other part of the push, they're not expressing skill. And, and that's a big problem with the push. The, the fact is that we want a push to be something where both players still interact and still take decisions. So if we're reworking push, um, we're giving a player choice, we're giving them the ability to um, adapt to the penalty that the push is instead of just accept it and wait one second until you, you get control again. And when this is like this is a base change. We're, this is not because we want to balance torture or any weapon. This is because we want push to be a, a healthier mechanic. And then all the weapons that you push, uh, push such as uh, most of uh, Ginebra, Loth, and obviously torture, uh, Constantine's torture, uh, those weapons will have to adapt. So some weapons that you think are okay power wise, they'll probably need either more power or uh, more usability. And Tautok, which is a weapon that's obvious, whose power is obviously never in the right place because it's just such a, a hard mechanic that you can do nothing about, makes a weapon just impossible to balance. So we think with that, Tautok will be able to just find its place in the game. Cool. Okay, uh, Pront Shot, uh, and this is a funny question. Are Pisachas and Nilbons edible? As in, can you eat them? Yeah. Yes. I don't know why, why uh, for, for me it was funny. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Oh my, I had one. Uh, okay, this one is good. Jeeper Creeper is asking, so with the Forge levels being half to 10, what's the rate for Forge prices increasing? With yield still cap at uh, 90,000 uh, for a level 10 rare? Yes, the force changes, uh, it's not really uh, the best, it's not really a, a final change. So um, we have great things coming for the forge, as you all know, because there are 
forge related events in the future, which we will not talk about. So anything we do about the forge system uh, from now until that those uh, big updates come, it's a little bit like what, what we said about Topchuk. Now that we know the destiny, now that we know where we're going, anything that's just simple enough to implement that will uh, pave the way and just prepare the game for when those new, uh, uh, new big updates come, we can do. So uh, reducing the force level to 10 is not something that we want to achieve, but just a, a step towards these uh, big updates that just because we can just do it right now, why not just advance it and have the game working uh, as it intended or as it will in the future um, because that, that, that's re just really really convenient mm -hmm. because if we make a mistake we know the mistake earlier we have the data so we, it just was a much better platform for the new update if you've like gone a step closer to your uh, to your objectives okay uh, this is an interesting one Adi is asking there are a few missions I never play as an antagonist will uh, instantly destroy the target Will there be anything put in place to stop uh, Grandad, <laughs> the protector, uh, getting blown up on site? So yeah, uh, people have been have been asking about these uh, missions yes. a lot. Yes, some weapons that um, hook themselves onto the ground with uh, effects that cannot be counterplayed, so they cannot be destroyed and so on, are very powerful against some bosses and specifically as. Uh, the protector, the second protector, um, when used by the antagonist. Uh, essentially, the second protector, protector is like a boss for the antagonist, right? Um, that they have to kill. And and some weapons just excel at that. And it's always been a, a problem because it's okay that some weapons are specifically very good against non-moving targets. Um, but but it's been a, a huge issue with antagonists and that mission. So, um, yes. We are doing something. We have re repeated many times with uh, balanced weapons that stick to the ground around that problem, and it's just something that we cannot do forever because uh, we cannot. We, we don't want to balance weapons around one mission. Um, so yes, we are doing something about it, and <laughs> I think it's coming in the next patch. <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> We are saying goodbye to, uh, to a very special person in our hearts. Um, so yeah, uh, you know what? Uh, on Discord, a lot of people always ask about the Shakura, the, the weapon for Valeria. And uh, Sergei Kosinski is asking if, uh, if this weapon is going to receive a nerf uh, soon. <laughs> they are always asking about this weapon. I am... Um yeah, for sure. Um, I don't have the list with me, but we do keep a list of the most uh, troubling weapons. Whether they they usually are there because they're either too powerful, uh, not like not useful enough, and sometimes they're on the list because their their usage is too flat. I'm not sure where those weapons are on the list, but I'll I'll check the list when I. <laughs> when I get to my place. Uh, well, you know, you can always ask on uh, our social media, uh, our, the official forum, Discord, a lot of channels you can ask about these things uh, every day since we are always uh, changing things. So it's difficult to have, like uh, Joan said, a list and a specific list of everything what is, uh, that is going to happen. So, um, yeah. It is wonderful to hear uh, Mercury talk about Tolchuk. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. Uh, <laughs> crispy churro. Pisacha is like an explosion of flavor. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wait, wait. Um, <laughs> hi, Karen. Hi, Joan. Hi, Chad. Hi, Jagger Wolfen. A lot of people here, guys. A lot of... Uh, Players uh, that I see every day. Uh, okay, let's see. Ocean Fox, Pisacha will be uh, most likely a delicacy on Mars because you will have to capture it without <laughs> it blowing up. It's like this fish. 
uh, this you know this fish it's mm-hmm. it's uh, little if you if you yeah yeah it's, it's like it's yeah maybe you you eat it and maybe you die or maybe you don't yeah I mean I mean I, this I think this fish needs to be like cooked in a special way so yes. that there's no poison everywhere. <laughs> uh, I like the idea of a pistachio, a pistachio dish, and, and I like the idea of a uh, uh, cook wearing armor. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so uh, Mac Death is asking, is that the community fan art in the background that is awesome and thoughtful? Yes, it yes. is. Oh my god, be careful with the camera. <laughs> It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah, guys, as you can see, we have a beautiful wall of fan art. Uh, it's uh, the amazing uh, artwork you sent us every uh, weekend, so we can include it on the Space Lords community every Monday. It's incredible. Uh, you guys have are so talented, and yeah, I myself uh, see it a lot, and I love all all of them they are amazing ah uh, yeah let's see um, we are going to uh, read a few more and then we we'll finish okay guys so yeah uh, uh, uh. my first time on space lore stream hi that's amazing we hope you guys like the content you can always uh, leave your suggestions and things like that so we can do things with you in the future, like playing with devs or um, yeah, Q and A like today, things like that. It's always cool to interact with the community. Hmm. Okay, Andre G. Pantonio, we are getting a, ch- a change on the weapons forge system. Can we expect any change? on the card shuffle as well. Oh my, they have been asking about that a lot. Yes, um, you know, the forge updates are quite a long way off. Yes. Um, but yeah, the fact that, yeah, yeah, like the forge system needs an improvement and card shuffling kind of is part of that advancement progression system, forge system that we want to change. So yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know about this one. Yeah, um, the passive bonuses. The passive bonuses is something that we like kept to the side. They are necessary uh, mm, to to increase the power level of the weapons and the offensive uh, power of uh, the characters. We need passive bonuses to to match the power, and so far we've done that through a simple. Mm, weapon resistance and that is what allows us to make uh, weapons scale in, in many ways through the force system and uh, not make them collapse into a really short time to kill game. So uh, Raiders has a, a time to kill that we're happy with, it, it, it's not that that quick uh, and it's also not uh, too long so that um, the cover system really is very important and uh, without the passive system we couldn't have scaling weapons so we really want to have the passive system to have a secondary tertiary role you shouldn't care about it that's why it has this we uh, it, it's not prominent uh, but yeah it's something that we can bring to the table um, for future progression but not very much Okay, uh, so uh, Samurai of Ice is asking, uh, will the whip for Valeria get a change or buff? Mm, well, we, we are always tweaking things, so we don't know yet. But uh, I saw another one. Oh yeah, Adi. Uh, he, Ginevra is my most favorite rider. We'll be, we will be getting a scheme for her. I'd happily pay whatever the cost it will be. Um, have in mind a lot of characters have less skins uh, so we need to give those characters more skins before creating uh, skins for, for, for the ones that have more <laughs> oh my god <laughs> okay then Mm-mm-mm. okay so GP creeper so what's the reason behind unifying all faction points into talent points Yes, um, faction points uh, were not playing as much as uh, 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 
as much of an important role um, as we uh, wanted them to. Uh, the faction point system, uh, uh, just like gold, has been uh, having more and more uses over time. Uh, faction points have not really increased in the um, uh, in how important they are. Um, so it was just too many currencies and too many systems kept uh, being maintained uh, for not that much of an interaction. So there was really no interaction between uh, Hades um, faction points and 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 world of faction points. So uh, that's something that we wanted to simplify. Uh, move them to a single uh, currency and when we move on to uh, the weapon shuffling changes uh, you see that uh, the role of the currency will change so for that we need uh, just a simple currency system okay you guys are... mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh uh, yeah the purple coin yeah so Adi, uh, I'm acquiring a lot of status coins, but not finding anything to spend them on. Uh, we'll be getting something else to spend them on, like emotes or loadout slots? No. Um, status coins is a prestige item. Mm -hmm. Status coins are about showing up. Status coins will only be used to acquire fungible aesthetic stuff. So like the discos we have and so on. It's a, it's a price for you. It's not, it's like, you have gold, if you have talent points, you want to save them up, have a million, and wait for the perfect, perfect character to appear and then spend them all. It's just fine. Hoarding gold is great. Hoarding status points really has no point. There's not, there's, it's just something that we're giving you as a price to show off and show everyone uh, how cool you are. And that's why it's always on, on, on fungible stuff. And so uh, we know from the data that many players are treating status points like they would treat gold. So right now I wouldn't spend it on an, uh, something that will that's just uh, one use, uh, one time use only. But that's just not how they work. And uh, we hope to convey that idea more powerfully in the future. And the fact that status right now are a prize that's meant to be consumed like an ice cream. It's like can't hold on ice cream. <laughs> Uh, Ocean Fox, uh, pajama skins for the characters, okay, uh, will be cool and inter interesting, seeing what they will wear will be awesome and <laughs> unique, well, I we idea. wrote that down for the future, just in case. Uh, mm -hmm. Abo, Abo Polo, oh hi, uh, every day I wonder if there's a plan for a new Lycos, Lycos weapon because he hasn't gotten any weapon since I started playing before the 80s campaign came out. Mm, yeah, we really want all characters who have uh, <clears throat> four or, uh, or ideally five weapons each. Um, there's, that, there's only that, that much design space that we want to explore with weapons. There are different roles and different systems for the characters. Uh, when we expand the weapon system in the future, we don't want to expand it horizontally and just add more weapons. We want to give those weapons that we have richness. So we want to make them uh, more configurable and have more power so that anything that we do in the future with weapons, they, it should apply to all weapons, like all five weapons of each character. So it's not currently in our plans to just add up weapons with no limit, but instead, when we do reach to a healthy number of weapons per player, which as I said is probably five, uh, then we want to expect on, on the complexity, capacity, and the, uh, uh, your ability to configure those weapons. Yeah. Uh, so a few players are asking about the uh, the effects on the game. I think that Leeway is also Benji Wola, Hack Milky Way. Are there any ideas or talk about producing uh, visual effects in game? Uh, a large handful of players have issues with a lot of lights, flashing lights, and new weapon systems have uh, added a lot of visual clutter. Uh, there could be a there could be a great benefit from some kind of graphical option for a lower yeah. SFX mode. There's absolutely like a visual creep where new weapons get implemented. There's more and more visual effects, and that's again a good reason why we don't want to have more and more weapons because there's no there, there's we need to have the ability to contain the complexity, the interactions, and the visual clutter of the weapon. So yeah, 
we do revisit weapons and their visual effects so that they are in line with other weapons and they don't uh, create uh, as much chaos. So back in the day when we had less weapons, the chaos would be much more limited, but with all the combinations of colors and, and permanent effects and so many things happening in the game, there's definitely this, it's building up com visual complexity and we have to revisit it from time to time to uh, get dial it back uh, to where it should be. But some weapons are like, it's not something that always makes it to the patch notes, so it's not really obvious, but uh, old weapons do go through the FX team to tune the effects, not because there were there was anything wrong with them, but they did need to be uh, more um, respectful of the space and the and the visual space of the rest of the weapons. Okay, guys. So we're going to read a few more, and we're going to finish for today. Uh, let's see. Um, Life twenty one Jaima uh, asks: Maybe seasonal skins or events like Christmas, summer, winter in the future. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, um, yeah, gaming Black Jesus definitely makes sense to only develop weapons on a need to basis and not just community ones. Good. Well, yeah, but uh, of course the community feedback is also so valuable to so helpful to us. So uh, I would say it's a mix of both. Yeah, I think we are going to close uh, the stream, but uh, we guys uh, have been uh, a lot of fun. Uh, we we are enjoying a lot to to you know to be here with you and to answer your questions. We hope you you have understand all the changes coming within the braces galore update. Uh, remind it will be out on July second. So yeah, uh, you can always use our social media channels, our uh, official forum, as I said before, the Discord, and so to ask us. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your uh, continued support. Uh, we hope to see you in the next streaming, and yeah. Thank you. Bye, guys.